Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we are going back to Olympic National Park. Now I know most of you are familiar with Olympic National Park, but those of you that aren't, it is in the state of Washington in the United States, in the northern part of the state. This case is very tragic in many ways. We're obviously going to get into the details. I'm going to have various maps up, but here's a, a map of where Olympic National Park is in the state of Washington. As you can see, it's to the west of Seattle. This case actually takes place mainly in Olympic National Forest, but also in the park as well. It's very dense. This part of the park is known for its rugged terrain. Today we're going to be talking about John Devine. Now this case happened back in September of 1997. John Devine was 73 years old at the time. He was said to be in excellent physical condition for his age. It is noteworthy that he was technically legally blind in one eye. However, this did not stop him from doing many, many hikes in and around this area. He was known for his long distance hiking abilities. He lived just north of the park in Seguim. He loved hiking and camping in Olympic National Park, Olympic National Forest. This was his favorite spot. Now he was camping with one of his friends in the Buckhorn Wilderness. Now this is right outside the main park's boundary. And again, I'm gonna have some maps up so you can see, but you can see these are some of the trails in and around the area that we're gonna be discussing. Very steep, very dangerous. You know, you'd make one slip here and that would not be a good day. So he definitely had a lot of experience. John's intentions were to summit Mount Baldly. Now, unfortunately, the trail to get there is the Maynard Burn Trail, which is apparently very steep and very rugged. His friend that he had been camping with in the Buckhorn Wilderness wanted to go out bow hunting instead. The two men had discussed these plans on the campsite the night before. They were both very experienced. They both knew the area. So it wasn't without question that they decided to go off alone. This is actually one of the bridges going into the Buckhorn Wilderness. I mean, look at that. It's just a log that's been smoothed out a little bit with kind of a railing, but definitely would be dangerous, especially if it was wet. These are some other trails that are going in and out of the Buckhorn Wilderness. Some of the trails that John may have taken. Of course, we don't know for sure. This is a very beautiful area. Lots of lakes and streams, places to camp. On the morning of September 7th, 1997, the two men went off in their separate ways. The last reported sighting that we know of, of John, he was on the Gray Wolf Ridge. Now I'm gonna have some pictures just to show you. This is definitely, look at this. Look at how steep and rocky it is. So obviously people that are doing this, they have some experience and knowledge because it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Now, and this was getting into times where there was inclement weather moving into the area. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But as you can see from these pictures, this is definitely a difficult hike. Apparently on the morning and afternoon that he was attempting this, the weather was mild, it was nice. Just wanted to put up some more maps. I know it's kind of hard to see, but Olympic National Park is around 142,000 square miles. The Buckhorn Wilderness by itself is roughly 45,000 acres. I know it's hard to see by the maps, but as you can see on the top of Mount Baldy, there's beautiful views, absolutely awe-inspiring. So it's not without wonder why a lot of people and John Devine himself wanted to try and summit that. Like I said in the beginning, the trail leading up that, at least the main trail, is very difficult, very rugged. Now here's another picture of various trails in and around the Buckhorn Wilderness. You can see there's not the greatest markings. Now I know that probably in our neoteric times, there's probably been modified signs, better directions because of some of these disappearances. John never returned to camp that evening. He and his friend Greg became very concerned. He waited a little bit longer, but then he contacted the authorities and reported John missing. Unfortunately, even though John had a lot of supplies and was well geared at camp, he only had some snack bars, some water that he was actually carrying with him that day because he had not intended to camp overnight at Mount Baldy. He had intended to come back to the campsite in the Buckhorn Wilderness. So this started the search for him. Of course, various search and rescue teams got involved. The Jefferson County Search and Rescue paired up with the Clallam County Search and Rescue, they had roughly 50 to 60 people on the ground at first, one helicopter, various ATV units. 
these were searches that were taking place in these giant valleys so it was very difficult terrain even though at this point the weather was still in their favor now at some point the washington civil air patrol got involved and helped the search that brought in a couple more helicopters they continued to search over the next couple days however these searches came up empty because John's friends and family lived so close, he only lived about 20 miles north of the park. Many of them came down to at least assist the SAR teams with whatever they needed. It was, however, at this point that the weather started turning against them. Clouds and fog moved in, the temperature started dropping, so obviously they became concerned. The search and rescue teams kept their ground people out in the field as long as they could however at some point they did have to bring them back and use helicopters more now unfortunately this gets us to the point in the investigation where even more tragedy occurred the main search efforts were taking place around the muller creek area of the buckhorn wilderness obviously flying areas up and around the gray wolf and mount baldy however on roughly the third day of the search one of the helicopters a bell 205a1 was getting ready to take off right near Slide Creek. The pilot made this gesture to the other people on the ground saying that he wanted to wait. Then without warning or any other signals, the helicopter just jolted up, then came crashing down. Tragically, three people, including the pilot, lost their lives in that crash. Another five that were in the chopper also were seriously injured. This of course brought the search for John Devine to a halt. This of course hit the media by storm. Investigators from the NTSB and many other surrounding agencies came to investigate the crash. However, simultaneously the search was still on hold. They did eventually get back to searching for John, but unfortunately at this point time had passed and the National Park Service has said that if he was walking around up there, quote, we would have found him by now. If he had fallen down or gotten hurt, by this point he was most likely deceased. The official search for John Devine was called off on September 13th of 1997. He was never found. And unfortunately, this was search and rescue's worst nightmare. It's always terrible and an awful tragedy when someone goes missing and you can't find them. However, one of your biggest, if not the biggest concern and fear is if you lose more people while searching. The worst case scenario being this when people, volunteers, actually lose their lives in the line of duty. Just so tragic. We owe them so much gratitude. I wasn't able to find the cause of the helicopter crash. I don't know if they just kept that out of the media, but I will have information in the description, links, various things if you'd like to do further reading. I couldn't even find a picture of John Devine online, nor in the archives. I would like to dedicate this video to John Devine, Kevin Johnston, Rita McMahon and Taryn Hoover, they were the three that lost their lives in the crash. Kevin was only 35 years old, he was the pilot. Rita was a search and rescue volunteer who helped train the dogs. Taryn Hoover was only 31 and he was a seasonal park employee who helped with the searches and worked in a spotted owl survey in the park. Also, I want to send thoughts and prayers out to the ones that were injured, Robert Feldman, Cynthia Stern, and Heidi Peterson. We owe you so much gratitude and so much thanks. Thank you all for your service. You are all truly superheroes. Thank you all for watching, as always. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Hello everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Today's upcoming hiking, camping season advice or suggestion is start leading a peripatetic lifestyle. What I mean by that is walk any chance you have. Start getting used to being on your feet, especially if you're planning on doing a through hike or a long distance hike, or if you've never hiked before, get used to walking and then eventually, you know, wear your pack, put some weight in it because you can train all day in the gym and get strong, but if you don't get your body and feet and legs used to carrying a pack, it can really catch up to you very quickly on trail. So that's my advice for today. Definitely get used to walking. If you're within a mile of something or two miles, work your way up or just get comfortable with whatever you, you are. And of course, before starting any new exercise program or health or diet change, please contact your doctor first, see them, get their okay.
For those of you that have plans or are planning a trip for camping or hiking this spring or summer, please let me know. Definitely leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about any adventures you all have coming up. I always like to hear possible new places. There's so many places just here in the United States that I've never been to. Please definitely leave me a comment and let me know about your upcoming adventures. If any of you have any questions, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, I'll be happy to answer them. If I can't, I'm sure there's other people in the comments that could be able to answer it. We have got a great group. There's a lot of very knowledgeable people, expert hikers and campers and climbers. There's always an answer out there somewhere. All right, everybody. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.